Welcome back to my full build series on the RC10B 6.4 two-wheel drive buggy. This video I am going to complete bag number four, which is the rear suspension. You see I have it laid out here. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to cut all these items off the trees and then we will get started. All right, so here we go. We got the arms cut. I'm gonna wait on the pills. I'll just cut the ones that I need off on the pills. Um, so yeah, the first step they have you do in the manual is put the C block on, which you'll see it's the one that has these little pegs sticking out of it so we stick those on and you'll see that one side has this like recess in it and the other side does not and so the pills go in on the recessed side if you get that wrong your arms are going to be super stiff so don't get that wrong um and then Actually, my setup and the manual are going to be the same. We're going to use these. The one dot to the side, number one, which is for one degree. Um, and those are going to point, I'll show you on here, but they're going to point out. You gotta make sure that you make these a mirror image. So just pop these in. Make sure you get them in all the way. So you can see here now, hopefully you can see that, that it's the one dot out. So then we stick this on the car like so and we're going to come in here and put thread lock on these screws since they're going into aluminum like that This should, these sh screws should go in nice and easily because we're going into pre-threaded aluminum. If it goes in hard, you got something crooked. Okay, find if you back off a little when that happens. You can normally click into a thread. Hard to get this on camera sometimes. Okay. So we got the C block in there. So then the next thing we're gonna do, we have these big long threaded screws and they actually have an Allen hex in them for the 1.5. And we're gonna install these in the appropriate hole. There's actually three options for holes. Um, the manual shows installing in the innermost hole. And so the inner and outer hole are on one side and then the middle hole is on the other. And so these arms, you'll flip them depending on what hole you're going to use. Um, but for the manual setup, you're going to use the two holes. And as it turns out, I'm going to be using the same one. It's labeled as A on the setup sheet, but it's this innermost hole. And so we're going to thread this in 
Just make sure it goes in straight here. And I've never used this style. I, I like this setup though, because you don't have to take screws in and out of your arms, which is nice. You just put the shock on here and then put a nut on. So that's super nice. I like that. And this thing is saying you should have 11 millimeters of this shaft sticking out. And let's go a little further. So this starts to get a little tighter. Once you get to the point of hitting 11, just a little bit further. You could also pre mark this with like a Sharpie, It'd probably make this a little easier. But okay, so we get 11 there. I'm going to do the same thing with this one and make sure you do it in the same hole. These arms are a little bit tricky to sight and see if you're getting this thing in straight from out here, but Yeah, if, um, so, you know, the thing with this setup is it's, this screw is just held in by friction. And when you take those nuts in and out, in theory, it could, it probably won't, but it could loosen this screw. And if you find that happening, you can drop a little bit of CA to secure these. And the manual mentions that actually. I'm not going to do that for now, but if it becomes a problem, I will definitely do that. All right, so once you get those put in with your 11 millimeters sticking out, you know, you can use like a ruler or something else. And if you don't have a measuring device, you could probably just size these up. Um, once you put the shocks on, you know, you just want to have a little bit of thread protrusion when you put the nut on the shock. So you can just do it that way if you don't have that. All right. So the next step here is to put these arms on the car. And I like to make sure these hinge pins are smooth. And if they aren't, sometimes you have to clean out these holes, but both of mine look really good. So then we're going to stick these arms on the car like so, and these shock standoffs point forward. You can actually build the car with shocks on the aft of the arm or forward of the arm, but the stock setup and what I'm going to be doing is forward of the arm. And then there's these wheelbase shims and, um, you know, they're arm spacing. So the stock setup is arms back. So we're going to stick these on the forward side here to get arms back. And we'll do the same with this one. Okay, then the next thing you're gonna wanna do is put this D block in and you can see again, there's a recessed, which is the side the pills go in. Um, and then there's a little cutout on the bottom, which is for this bumper to get inserted. The bumper goes in like that. Um, and then so for pills, I'm going to be doing the five dot down. So it's the half a degree down.
Yeah, it's really critical to get these flashings when you're cutting these to make sure you get the flashings um, fully cut off or these pills won't go in all the way. We'll put that to the side now. So yeah, we got here, you can see five down. And the, the manual has the D block centered, but I'm going off of this other setup. A little flashing right here. I'm going to, there we go, get that cut off. OCD will not let me leave stuff like that on. So then we're going to stick this thing on like so. push that on and the bumper will go in but they actually have you install the screws that hold this D block in later because the gearbox the screws come up and go into the gearbox so I'm just going to set this bumper aside until we get to that step and we'll install that later Anyway, that was a short video, but that wraps up bag four, and I hope you found this video useful, and if you did, please like and subscribe.